Here are the answers to the quiz questions. Number one talks about a location that is 3 meters from a wave source A and 4.20 from another source B. Constructive interference occurs. Okay, source A and B are coherent and in phase. What is the maximum wavelength of the waves? Now the word coherent means they both have the same wavelength. So they produce the same wavelength, but uh, you can see that the location is 3 meters from one and 4.20 meters from the other. Now constructive interference takes place when the crest from one source falls exactly on the crest from the other source, which means the path difference between them should be an integral multiple of the wavelength. So we can say that the condition for constructive interference is the path difference is m lambda. And again, this is repeated question five with a diagram. So here the path difference is 1.2 meter, which is the difference between 4.2 and 3. And for constructive uh, interference, the path difference must be m times lambda, where m is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, m is 1. Because if m is 0, then there is no path difference. So from there, we see that lambda is 1.2 meter. Oh, that simple. Because if m must be 1, then lambda is just 1.2 meter, and that's the answer. Brings us to the second one. A tsunami, an ocean wave generated by an earthquake, propagates along the open ocean at 700 kilometers per hour and has a wavelength, how much is that, 750 kilometers. What's the frequency? Direct question, speed given, and uh, wavelength given. you got to find the frequency. It's just a matter of dividing. Frequency is speed divided by the wavelength. which is 700 divided by 750, you're going to get the answer as 0.933 per hour. But if you want it in seconds, you know, you got to multiply, I'm sorry, divide that by 3600, divide that by 3600. So you get it per second, which is hertz. All right. Number three, wave amplitude given, wavelength, given and it says wave travels 60 meters in 12 seconds from which you can find the speed 60 divided by 12 gives you the speed right okay so that's 5 meter per second is the speed and then you have the wavelength and uh, there's nothing to do with amplitude here that's just an extra term that's given uh, you don't need to use it frequency is just speed by wavelength and you get one point six seven hertz and number four speed of waves on a thin wire is 150 meter per second the density of the material is 5000 kilogram per meter cube the diameter of the wire is given what's the tension that the wire is under okay speed is given by square root ft by mu but remember that mu is the mass of one meter. So when you rearrange that, of course, you get Ft is V squared times mu, and mu is the mass of one meter, which would be pi r squared rho, because the shape is that of a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times density gives you the mass of one meter. All right. So... Half of the diameter gives you the radius, and that's in meters now, times the density, gives you the mass per unit length in kilograms per meter. Once you get that, take it, substitute it back into this, and you get the tension. Twenty two point one newtons. That is what it is. 
And this is a question that was repeated on the lab, okay? Number five, what is the wavelength of a wave described by this function? As you can see, it has an amplitude, and if you look at it carefully, you know that's A cos Kx plus omega t. Okay, y as a function of x and t is A cos Kx plus omega t. And that's also clear if you look at the units. Meter raised to minus 1, second raised to minus 1. Now compare the given equation with the general equation k is 3, but we know that k is 2 pi by lambda. So 2 pi by lambda is 3, rearranged to get lambda. 2.09 meter. That's the answer. That is the wavelength. Again, this is uh, repeated. This was just like this is just like question one, and this time there is a diagram. So there is three meters from one source A, four point two from the other. So from A, it's only three point two. From B, it's four point. I mean three and four point two. And this time it's talking about destructive interference. And uh, coherent, so it means same wavelength, like I told you before. And uh, the difference in path should be equal to m plus half times lambda. Because to get destructive interference, the crest of one must be superposed on the trough of the other. So the path difference must be lambda by two. That's the minimum, right? Okay, lambda by 2, and so lambda by 2 is 1.2, and so lambda is 2.4. Well, I'm trying to show you that generally the path difference must be m plus half lambda. In this case, m is 0 because we're looking for the minimum path difference. Number 7, what's the period of a wave described by this big function? When you look at that function, you see that it is the sum of two cosine terms and so you need to know what cos A plus cos B is. Now this is what is a given. I've written it without the units. That's cos, that's A, that's B and cos A plus cos B is 2 cos 1 half A plus B times cos a minus B, of course, one half A minus B. So, when you use that, you're going to get two times two cos half nine x plus f fifteen t. That's what you, when you get when you add these, you're going to get nine x plus fifteen t. But when you subtract, you're going to get three x plus five t. So when you compare that. This is uh, the amplitude, so you don't have to worry about that. And so this is the term that shows the phase. So that should be kx plus omega t. So k is 3, omega is 5. 5, okay. And uh, omega is, you know, 5. So, you know, time period is 2 pi by omega, which is 2 pi by 5, because we got that from here. So it's 1.26 seconds. Because this time you're looking for the period. Brings us to the eighth one. What's the period of a wave described by this function? Similar to something we've done before. General no, That's the equation given. 2 cos 3x plus 5t. And now you know omega is 5. Because that's kx plus omega t. And if omega is 5. And you know t is 2 pi by omega. Like in the last question. It's 2 pi divided by 5, 1.26 seconds, just like the last one, same answer now. All right, number 9. This is, a, like somebody said, a hippie town. They're trying to send electrical power uh, as mechanical waves on ropes. That's just a joke, but just for the sake of doing this. Remember that the mass per unit length is given. Tension is there. Wave amplitude is limited to this 0.500 meter, 
And what's the frequency of the waves necessary to transmit power at the average rate of 2 kilowatts? And we have this ready-made formula for power transmitted, right? And that is 2 pi squared f squared rho s velocity a squared. And now remember that uh, the terms are frequency, density, surface area, velocity, and amplitude. But yet... Velocity is square root f t by mu. So first calculate that. 63.24 meter per second. And once you get there, rearrange this equation to make frequency the subject. 2 kilowatts is 2,000 watts. And then everything else is, you know, density is... Remember that uh, pi r squared rho is mu. So mu is pi r squared rho, so and you have rho here, okay. Or rather, try to understand that uh, rho times s, this s is the surface area that's, uh, that's going to be pi r squared, you know, rho s is pi r squared rho. So that's equal to mu, that's why those two terms have been replaced by mu here, okay. And so you get the frequency as 2.07 hertz. Last one, straightforward. Length of the string given, mass is given, so, and the tension given. Mu is the mass of one meter. So that's in kilograms now, that's in meters. You get, once you get mu, just take that, plug it into this. And find the speed is 122.47 meter per second. All right, so once you get the velocity for the fundamental frequency, you know it's vibrating as one segment. So the length is lambda by 2. Lambda is 2 times the length. So you get 1.2 meter. And once you get that, frequency is speed by wavelength. So... Speed is so 122.47 divided by 1.2, which gives 102 hertz. And that is quest number one. Thank you.